How U.S. Aircraft Carriers Protect Itself in Close Encounters American military might be most famously exhibited by its large-deck, nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. They led American warfighters to sustain deadly airstrikes against adversarial troops on land or at sea for months at a time, hitting hundreds of targets every day with pinpoint accuracy. They also don't require access to bases on land like some other warfare systems do in order to carry out their tasks. U.S. aircraft carriers are the most powerful ships in the world and are almost impossible to destroy. Hey guys, welcome to our channel Future Warplanes, where we tell you about military fighter jets, military drones, military planes from the currently famous in the air to the most advanced around the world. In addition, for latest episodes, we'll also be covering all military defense news. So stay with us till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. And before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future. The American Navy's aircraft carriers are emblems of its might, and lately, a Chinese military scholar stirred some controversy by urging China to sink two of them in order to weaken the American will. Indeed, it's simpler to say than to do. In order to guide the development of future supercarriers, the U.S. Navy tested the defensive capabilities of its carriers in 2005 during a test known as a sink exercise, utilizing the decommissioned USS America as a target. In a number of different attacks, the ship was continuously attacked and hammered. According to the war zone, the carrier survived a sustained bombardment for four weeks before it was finally sunk. These marine behemoths serve as symbols of American might for a good reason. One of the 11 U.S. carriers may be taken out of a fight by China, but sinking one of these 100,000-ton warships is a completely different matter. But that doesn't mean it can't be done. In a report, experts stated that it is just not an easy task. An aircraft carrier should be able to withstand significant damage, according to retired Captain Talbot Manville, an aircraft carrier engineer who was involved in the development of the new Ford-class carriers. It wouldn't be impossible to hit an aircraft carrier, but unless they hit it with a nuke, an aircraft carrier should be able to take on substantial damage, he added. At 1,100 feet long, the carriers are floating nuclear power plants, fuel tankers, bomb inventories, and an airstrip stacked on top of one another like layers of cake. In order to protect them from missiles, fighters, and torpedoes, cruisers and destroyers encircle them, even if it means giving their lives in the process. In a battle, the Chinese military has access to a wide variety of armaments that it could use against a U.S. carrier. China is equipped with a number of anti-ship cruise missiles, torpedoes, and carrier killer anti-ship ballistic missiles, including the DF-21D and the DF-26, which are both capable of carrying conventional and nuclear weapons. China would probably deploy missiles to destroy the carrier, damaging the flight deck where jets take off and land, and the aircraft of the air wing with ballistic missiles. Brian Clark, a former U.S. Navy officer and defense expert at the Center for Strategic and Budgetary Assessments, or CSBA, stated in a report that weapons like cruise missiles, which can strike with pinpoint accuracy, would likely be aimed at the hangar bay, superstructure, and possibly some of the airplanes. All of these targets, which are all elevated well above the carrier's waterline, are intended to take the carrier out of the fight. He continued, they might have to resort to a torpedo attack if they really wanted to sink the carrier. Torpedo defense is challenging and imperfect, therefore they end up being the more worrisome threat. The aircraft carriers of the Nimitz class, used by the U.S. Navy, are among the biggest warships ever constructed, with a displacement of more than 100,000 tons. Both their size and the compartmentalization of the carrier affect how well they can withstand a battering, according to Clark. He then drew attention to several additional features of the formidable ship, saying, In the instance of the USS America, the size alone resulted in it being relatively survivable. If a torpedo or other underwater attack were to cause a carrier to sustain damage, the crew would attempt to seal off the carrier's main spaces. It would take a significant number of these compartments to fill with water for the ship to sink because of how enormous it is. The ships are hard to enter because of the type of steel employed, according to Manville. It also contains voids that allow for warhead gas expansion as well as several layers of steel for side and bottom protection. The additional protection is also intended to prevent damage from causing the bombs and missiles that are housed in the ship's armament magazines to explode. In order to keep these bombs and missiles as protected as possible, the U.S. Navy also pays attention to how it transfers weaponry about the ship. Additionally, measures have been taken to minimize the number of heated surfaces that could catch fire. 
There's also a lot of redundant systems, which makes it difficult to take out basics like the propulsion system, which would leave the ship dead in the water if destroyed. Because crucial systems may be rerouted thanks to this, it's also difficult to take out essentials like this. The ship may retreat if required, so long as it's mobile. A carrier can be sunk if you have enough time and the right weapons, but if you also have defenses, people working damage control and propulsion, the carrier can sustain some damage and eventually drive back. According to Manville, a professor at the U.S. Naval Academy, U.S. carriers can take a lick and keep on ticking. Torpedoes and sonar are equipped on carriers and they're escorting ships to keep the stealthy boats from getting near enough to launch a torpedo assault. Additionally, for missile defense, the battle group's outfitted with electronic deterrence and kinetic interceptors. In addition, they have a number of close-range weapon systems that they might use as a last resort to attack approaching enemies. The main danger to them is from submarines. It is feasible that a carrier may be sunk by enough 1,000-pound torpedoes fired simultaneously and accurately, as are frequently carried by Russian subs or were built to kill carrier groups. U.S. carrier strike groups have the ability to put missiles on submarine encounters very fast. This is specifically why the U.S. has invested a lot of work in anti-submarine warfare. In order to track submarines, SH-60 helicopters can drop torpedoes on sonar buoys where escort ships can fire torpedoes or torpedoes fired by rockets. To stop enemy missiles from aggressively targeting U.S. carriers, the U.S. has significantly increased its emphasis on electronic warfare. Clark said that the Chinese could launch a missile, but it may not be precisely targeted enough to really hit a moving carrier from 1,000 miles away. Improved missile defense capabilities are also of great significance. The SM-6, SM-2, and rolling airfray missile are just a few examples of kinetic interceptors that can be used to bring the object down, he continued. Of course, there's also the air wing, which might have up to 60 fighters as well as a handful of jammers, helicopters, and early warning planes. It would take a lot to get past that, Manville added, because we really have a powerful air wing that can travel hundreds of kilometers out to offer a buffer for approaching stuff. The carrier should be placed in the battle group's immediate vicinity, Manville stated, as that is where it's least vulnerable. The escorts, or smaller ships, that surround U.S. aircraft's carriers. They travel in carrier strike groups of at least one carrier, one cruiser, and one or two destroyers, and when necessary, they're able to unleash a ton of firepower. They are really carefully guarded, Clark said. You have to fire hundreds of rounds of the carrier strike group to even get a couple of them through, but that doesn't rule out the possibility of overwhelming a strike group. China could be able to do that in all likelihood. In a recent speech at the Heritage Foundation, Clark detailed how China could launch 600 missiles at a carrier group downrange, which, on a good day, could destroy about 75% of the incoming Chinese weaponry. However, this puts Chinese military in a difficult situation. If a carrier's just been damaged and not sunk, the People's Liberation Army must make the difficult choice of how many weapons it'll waste in order to take it out of commission for a few weeks. They no longer possess those weapons for use in another phase of the battle, according to Clark. Perhaps that's worthwhile to them, or perhaps it isn't. And in a war, it's likely that the U.S. would use bombers and long-range missiles to destroy these missile batteries before sending a carrier into their area of effect. And that's it for today's video, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed it. Please click on the like button and share with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. And we thank you for watching today.